Welcome to Rockcast. Recording now. Dinosaur production. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome to Rockcast. Uh, today we are coming back from the world. I don't know what episode this is. I think it might be uh, like 33? five. No, no, no. That's hiking with Rock. See. Oh. You get him confused. Yeah, trust me. It's a fucking nightmare. Like on every, almost every episode of Hike with Rod, I'm like, welcome to Rockcast. Fuck. Hiking with Rod. <laughs> so, but then I restarted it. Anyways, I digress. Today we have uh, in the studio uh, via Zoom, uh, Mr. Ian Strait, a.k.a. Crotch, a.k.a. my ex-boss of Vape and Smoke, a.k.a. one of the most depressing fucking human beings. Uh, he... He is a black metal head at heart, and uh, he's taken black metal to even a more depressing level. It, his, the music that he's creating is for a certain people, and we'll let him discuss that in a minute. But I think it's so sad that, uh, who was it that killed himself in, uh, in, uh... Paula was, Oled? Dead? Yeah, dead. Uh, would probably come back to life and then kill himself again. Like, so that being said, uh, Jacalo is the name of the band, and you just released your first nine-song fucking EP. Uh, you did 99.9% of the editing, producing, and everything, but I still got to put my name on it, so that's what matters to me. Uh, let me know how that sounds in the background. I'm playing Stuck in This Place right now. In the background, can you hear it? Yeah, for me, it's a little, it's like in and out. Yeah, well, that's because I turned it down. Oh. Yeah, I can turn it up. I try to level it, and I have to go up. So, what's up, buddy? Oh, not much, man. It's uh, it's it's been real. <laughs> the, the last two days have been uh, since I released the album on Friday. We've uh, I've been trying not to like obsessively stare at the stats of the of the album. Um, Hard. And, yeah, and, and how many plays, you know, I've got, I've sold a few albums, a few copies already, so. Jesus. I mean, the, uh, for, the reality, I think, for me is, um, you know, the album is, it's more than music. Uh, it, it, it is me, and it, it's a nine-track album. Uh, seven of those nine songs directly relate to my life. Um, Two of the tracks represent something that could happen if I didn't make this music and work on what I work on. Um, and if you, once you listen to the album, it's pretty self-explanatory which two tracks are not directly me, um, but more of a representation of what could happen, you know. And so, it, making this album has been. Hold on a second. This isn't the same shit you left this house with, dude. This, I, I, for, I actually literally had to take my headphones off and I thought I'd put the wrong track on from a real band. I'm not even kidding, dude. It, it's totally... Like your screams and everything. What a trip, dude. Wow, Ian. Which, which track? Fuck in this place. Is this really you? Did you fucking, did you go home and just rip off some obscure black metal Norwegian dude that killed himself and his whole band? Wow. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. I, you don't understand. I was here when this all started. Your production levels are intense, man. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Anyways, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that just, I'm just going to keep these rolling. So, all right, real quick, before we go on, where are, is your music located? Located out of, uh, right now you can get it on Bandcamp. Uh, can under spell Dracalo. that name? Yeah, and spell that for people. Uh, so Dracalo is spelled D-R-E-K-A-L-O. Uh, yeah, and uh, we both know I'm an interrupter, so I apologize for that immediately. <laughs> but uh, what is Dracalo? So Dracalo is a Slavic uh, myth lore, uh, a ancient beast that eats the souls of unbaptized Christian babies. So he's obviously a ginger right off the bat. You know? <laughs> um, um, that's cool, dude. That's cool. You know, uh, the irony of uh, 
that you, do you start, when, when did you decide you wanted to do this? About what? I, I have no time reference for things. So, I quit my other my other band moniker sometime in late 2016, uh, and it was about 2019, uh, the middle of it. I'd say like maybe about March of last year that it started to kind of brew up, and I just needed, uh, you know, the, the my business was collapsing, and there was a lot of other outside stress that kind of just took shape, and all of that hatred. Uh, just crumbled the little bit of sanity that I had had left, and it, this yeah. just boiled. Uh, this just boiled up from in deep, and it had to come out somehow. And so, rather than follow through with some of what's on the album, I decided to write about it instead of do it. It's an interesting process. It was it was terrifying. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read real quick the description of uh, the album, and uh, the album's title is stuck in this place, which is. Like, uh, so, but this, when we started working on this in this studio, how long ago was it? It was about, what, two or three months before the whole Corona thing really took off? Yeah, like December. So the whole album is uh, called Stuck in This Place. I just think that's funny, which is also track number eight. Uh, depression, despair, and self-hatred are just a taste of what's in store with Stuck in This Place. Irony. Uh, Stuck in This Place has been 27 years in the making. As someone who suffers from chronic depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, I needed an outlet for my emotions. I have created under many different names and types of music. Stuck in this place is a mixture of styles and influences that reflect the emotions I struggle with daily and the sounds that help me continue making evil music instead of leaving this shitty place. I will stay here and suffer and I'll bring you with me. <laughs> Thank you to Rod of Dire Sin Productions. That guy's a douchebag. Uh, for pushing me through the hard times and probably produced this album with me. Oh yeah, we take all one and a half percent credit for that, and we expect our name onto every production. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, fucking released March. Uh, the track names are "Born of This," "Slaves to the Sky," "Inner Pain," "Sonata," beautiful, uh, "Deliverance," "The Space Between Life and Death," uh, and then uh, they get uh, terrifying. Uh, some sort of snuff porn music here, I think. Uh, Gary and Mom. My mom refuses to listen to these two. Uh, Gary Ridgway, Dead Body Defiler, and their final wrestling place, the Green River, which I believe both of those are right out of here, right? Yeah, they're local. Local, you know, so keep it local. I used to live, I used to live like less than three miles from one of the dump sites of the bodies where he would go back and actually like fuck the dead. So I wrote the final resting place under a different uh, moniker a few years back, and then I re I reworked it, added real drums to it, took out my synth drums, and uh, added vocals. What the fuck is this? This is exciting. I haven't got to hear any of these. Oh yeah, this one's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. So, um, yeah, I also noticed you have all of these available to play. You could knock that down and yeah, make sure you can't play all of them. Pick one of your most hated, my suggestion, one of your most hated, one of your favorites, and have that that they can listen to, and then the rest of them they have to either download or something. Um, I, well, that, they're all... They're, they're all set to basically, they can only listen to them a few times and then they have to purchase them. So even if someone decides that they like it and, oh, I'll just listen to it for free, you're only going to get one or two, a couple of shots out. Yeah, of I would make it one. I would, I mean, seriously, dude, don't don't just give it away like that. It's showing enough interest and it's really good. And you're not, don't, don't be a slut, dude. Don't be a slut. <laughs> but because it also takes away our ability to give away stuff. But, um, yeah, we were going to discuss that. So anyways, on, uh, you're from Yakima, right? Grew up in Yakima. Did. Smoked so much. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. I've never seen a positive story come out of Yakima. You know, like, Boy Scout troop saves puppy. It's always homeless man raped by a large man in an alley. Not robbed, just raped. <laughs> yeah, they didn't take anything. They just raped him. So, that happens a lot. 
Now, I know this is therapy for you, as it needs to be. Um, is there any part of you that hopes some, that, it, that people can relate to it? Do you hope people can get hope out of it or not feel alone? Or do you hope that this is the song they go into the bathroom and play while uh, they blow their brains out? Like, I mean, well, it's a common misconception of a lot of our styles of music, you know, yours yeah. being awful. Um, so... <laughs> For, for my music, for that, for this album specifically, um, I can't speak for future albums because will they all be a dark undertone? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, that's that's just me. But um, for this album, um, I want people that feel like me to be able to relate and, and to be able to see that, you know, because not everybody that listens to, to that feels like us wants to listen to Alice in Chains or you know, dashboard confessional or, you know, or even some of the more uh, screechy, depressive, suicidal black metal, you know, some, you want that kind of almost a middle ground. And, and that's what I provide for them. Well, um, you, have, you have a hell of a talent for uh, ambient music or stuff. I mean, you, how many songs do you have, you know, just sitting there on that computer? Uh, fucking... uh, 96 that were published and another 103 that I, I just now I use them as sample banks for like I used a couple of the sounds out for stuck in this place I grabbed out of the song that I made but was never happy with it so nice nice yeah man it, it's uh it's killer it's killer to watch it's killer too because when you came into it it was you know we're gonna you're, you wanted to make a black metal album like just a black metal album and it just I watched it happen as you you kind of dialed in what your strengths were what you wanted to do. And uh, it seems like it became more important to you to make the music you wanted to make than to, to strictly make a, a black metal. That's what took me longer to understand where you're coming from. This is not what I was expecting. And that's what makes it really magical. And even listening to it, dude, it, it scares me. Uh, it makes me worry about you. When we did that session where you just screamed in there, I mean, it was... It was a viable concern that somebody would go by and think that somebody was either murdering somebody or themselves. It was depressing. It was hard to watch. And, uh, and then in the end, though, I see what it's done for you. Dude. Like, I mean, yeah. you, I mean, I don't know if it's something you want out there, but you do, you do see counseling. You truly do have PTSD. And uh, even, uh, even your counselor was like, as terrifying as this is, it's, it's a good outlet. It's a healthy yeah. outlet. It's, it's, it's lancing the wound. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and the other part to that is I really want people that don't. Because there are people that truly believe that PTSD is just like, oh, you can get over it. Or, you know, they, they don't understand mental health and they try to have this like a hundred, like, like positive vibes only kind of people. I want them to hear it and go, fuck, fuck, I feel like a piece of shit when I say shit to people like that now. That, it's yeah. kind of, it's, it's kind of a double edged sword for me because I, I, it's a fuck you to everybody who didn't support me and it's a thank you to everyone who did. You know, because without them, uh, track number nine would be a reality. And that, by yeah. far, is the most depressing song. I, I mean, I listen to it four or five times a day, and I still cry every time I listen to it, you know? Ah, I but mean, it's just you stop doing that. <laughs> but it, it, it's, you know, there's it's a, a hard point as an artist where you actually have to stop listening to your own stuff so you can move <laughs> on to the next one. I know. I know. No, but it's, you know, it's so exciting, dude. I remember, you know, before this digital shit, too, every time we release an album, man, just... Wait. What track are what track are you on? Okay, this place. I figure I play the title track. This is the only one I actually recognize. Yeah. No, it sucked. We were recording. We had the studio all set up, and then you know, all this shit went down. And uh, I think that actually kind of kind of forced you to finish this off. I mean, this was supposed to be a four song EP, four four, four track EP, and it turned into a whole fucking album. Now, uh, you said you were interested, or you had somebody express interest in designing a logo or the album art? Well, he offered either one, but he does more of a cartoonish art, so I don't know if it's going to fit with what I want. Oh, but we should definitely throw it out there that you're looking for a graphics artist that knows black metal or dark ambient metal or something. They have to be a metalhead. I hate, you know, like... Well, I love this part. It, it's coming out choppy on my end, but uh, hopefully it's not picking. Yeah, it's picking up through my mic. So yeah, I 
think people uh, are going to be pleasantly surprised by it too. And you did a really good job on your uh, final mixing and editing, dude. You did good work. Thank you. Yeah, the f the only two songs there was two tracks that it, I still don't know if I was a hundred percent satisfied. But I would say, and those are the first two tracks. I mean, and, and that's okay. Um, for me, they weren't as important as the rest of that album. You know, like they're important, but it's a story, you know, and yeah. when you listen to that story, I guess it kind of makes more sense, you know, um, it, it's, it's from birth to now, it's 27 years of hatred. <laughs> Seven years of hatred, there you go. Well, I mean, I'm not 27, but that'd be nice. But at least, uh, no, I get it, I get it. I gotta start somewhere. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, awesome. So, what else? my first uh, album interview <laughs> well i don't you know i guess that's pretty much first, it <laughs> yeah that's the first time i've ever done one <laughs> yeah well man uh, i am really proud of you i watched you do this shit i know you, we met what two years three years ago i worked for you for two I lived in your shop for one <laughs> you know and now all this shit's ended and the whole world seems to have kind of gone along with the with all of that and it's just weird Hope you're staying safe and sane out there, and uh, it's at the end. Now, do you plan on, I mean, you're going to be obviously making more of this shit. Yes. So, you got plans to try to put together an actual live band, or what, what do you see as a live? Because I know you're always talking about slamming these out live. Do you see it more of a DJ kind of, you need no. to get loopers and start writing your own, your own shit. So, I, I, to be honest with you, if I do it live, um, I, I would I'd be down. Uh, I would just get like a drummer, um, definitely get a drummer and give him exactly you know, give him my file so he can see. And then, yeah, well, any drummer worth their salt will be able to do it. The thing is always finding the right genre of drummer or a jazz drummer. Jazz drummers can play any kind of music whatsoever. I don't know. Well, and I uh, use a couple of jazzy type beats on a few songs because it makes them work creepy. So yeah, no, yeah, no, it's all it's all really good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then there was the whole learning process too. I mean, it took from start to finish for this particular album. About what? How long have you been working on it? Since day one in the studio. Here. Five, five months. Five months. That's not bad. Man. Not bad. All right, dude. Well, on that note, I think I'm gonna end the interview. Yeah, that well, I gotta go sell weed to people. See you guys. Into here a couple minutes of bar in the game. Maybe. Yeah, most of your cell links are good too. Four, 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 five, six. Yeah, that last one's long enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a it's a tear jerker. Oh, are you checking it out? <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to it. I haven't got to hear any of this shit. You get a lot of nerve. This shit will take you away from reality, man. It's hard to get back. Alright, man. Well, guys, that's right. Chicago. The name of the album is Stuck in This Place. You can find it on Bandcamp at Chicago.com. Go to the Facebook page, Chicago at Facebook, and uh, give him a like, give him a comment. Go check out the songs. He is fiending right now for input, good or bad. Uh, and praise Jesus. Uh, give him a lot of God love, a lot of God comments. Uh, I, I started to, um, I'm going to try to get my stuff put up for sale on Amazon, Spotify, and all of those. I started the process this morning. Cool. Okay, man. All right, dude. Okay, well, we'll see you later. I'll try to get this edited up for the next two months. All right. <laughs> All right. Later, dude. Bye. All right, guys. Well, that was Rockcast 2.0 with Tricalo. Uh, his album, Stuck in This Place, it really, for what it is, it's really good. And uh, I, I'm excited to see what he has coming up next. Thank you for watching, guys. Like I said, go to Dracalo at 
bandcamp.com and uh, go to his Facebook page, give him a like, um, and maybe purchase a track. Just like one track or something would be really cool. But listen to it first because they're insane. Um, also, check out Hiking with Rot if you're bored and my YouTube channel at Rockcast. Also, check out uh, Dire Sin Productions. That's my main page for all this stuff. And be safe, stay healthy, stay high. I love you all. Rot. Q music, bitch. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is only Dice and Production. production. <laughs> the only two teachers are almost alone. Stay insane. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal.